Opus, a city in the region of Locride, was the home of Patroclus, the son of the nobleman Menetius. The streets of the city were full of laughter and games, and the young prince, with his brown hair and bright eyes, was often the center of attention. His days were filled with the typical activities of a noble boy, learning the history of his ancestors, practicing with sword and shield, and dreaming of the day when he would lead. However, there was also time for fun and laughter, for innocent banter with other children of the court. His father, Menetius, had high hopes for him. He wanted Patroclus to grow up to be a wise and strong leader, someone who could lead his people through times of peace and war. Beneath these expectations, however, Menetius also wanted his son to enjoy his youth, something he had lost prematurely. One day, in the shaded atrium of the palace, Patroclus was in the midst of a dice game with other young noblemen. Laughter and banter filled the air as the dice rolled and decreed the fate of the players in the game. However, what began as a friendly diversion soon turned into a fierce dispute. Words became sharper, glares darker, and what seemed like a simple disagreement quickly escalated. In the heat of the moment, and in a fit of anger, Patroclus struck the other young man, who fell to the ground and did not get up. Silence took over the atrium. Everyone present was paralyzed by the gravity of what had just happened. Patroclus, with bated breath, looked around, hoping for understanding, but found only horrified faces. The repercussions were not long in coming. Despite being an accident, the death of a young nobleman could not go unpunished. However, Menetius, in an attempt to protect his son from certain revenge, decided to send him into exile. The sun was at its highest point when Patroclus arrived in the lands of Thaya. The rolling hills, covered in vibrant green, contrasted with the tumultuous past he left behind. He was an exiled youth, carrying the burden of an unintended death. King Peleus, a man of wise eyes and majestic bearing, welcomed him into his court. Though a powerful monarch, Peleus possessed a deep understanding of human nature and saw in Patroclus a tormented soul seeking redemption. It was not long before Patroclus met young Achilles. At that time, Achilles was not the legendary warrior the world would come to know. He was a boy with golden hair, an infectious laugh, and an unbridled passion for life. The two young men, separated by fate and brought together by circumstance, soon found an affinity for each other. While Achilles taught Patroclus the arts of hunting and swordsmanship, Patroclus shared with Achilles stories of distant lands and wisdom beyond his years. Under the supervision of Chiron, the wise centaur and Achilles' tutor, the two young men trained together. The forest surrounding Peleus' palace became their playground, and the mountains, their challenge. Each dawn found them running uphill, strengthening not only their bodies but also their bond. However, it was not all training and play. In the evenings, as the fire crackled and the stars shone in the sky, Patroclus and Achilles used to sit and listen to Peleus' stories. Stories of gods, heroes, and mythical creatures that shaped the world they knew. Through these stories, they both learned about honor, sacrifice, and destiny. Over time, their friendship deepened. Achilles, with his innate confidence, often dragged Patroclus on adventures, exploring forests and rivers, while Patroclus, with his calm wisdom, sometimes curbed the demigod's momentum. Under the protective roof of Peleus, and in the shadow of the fortress of Thaya, Achilles and Patroclus forged a relationship that became the envy of many. In Thaya, Patroclus not only found a home, but also a brother-in-arms and a lifelong friend. Time later, Menelaus' palace in Sparta was filled with laughter and festivities. Princes and kings from all over the world had come to court Helen, the woman of matchless beauty. But it was Menelaus who won her hand, and for a time, peace reigned. However, love is capricious, and the gods even more so. Paris, the young prince of Troy, was captivated by Helen's beauty during a diplomatic visit. Whether by a spell of fate or genuine desire, Helen and Paris fled together to Troy. Courts throughout Greece were filled with rumors of Helen's disappearance. Whispers wafted through the halls and squares, while bards sang of the beauty of the woman whose face would launch a thousand ships into the sea. Helen, the wife of King Menelaus of Sparta, 
had been seduced and taken to Troy by Prince Paris. In the distant lands of Thya, Achilles, and Patroclus listened attentively to the stories that the messengers brought. Tensions between the Greek city-states and Troy had been building for years, and this incident threatened to unleash a war of epic proportions. Menelaus, wounded in his pride and heart, appealed for help to all the lords of Greece, reminding them of the Pelican Oath. Years before, Helen's suitors had sworn to protect her chosen marriage, regardless of who the lucky one was. Now, that oath united them in a common cause. As armies prepared and ships ready for war, Patroclus and Achilles found themselves at a crossroads. Achilles, with his prowess in battle, knew he would be a valuable asset to the Greeks, but he was also aware of the prophecies that said he would not return from Troy. Patroclus, always at his friend's side, felt the weight of loyalty and duty. Peleus, Achilles' father, knew that his son was destined for greatness, but also for tragedy. He tried to convince Achilles to remain in Thya, away from the conflict. However, the call of honor and the possibility of glory were strong. Moreover, Achilles had received training from the centaur Chiron, who had taught him not only to fight but also to understand honor and duty. One night, as the stars shone over Thya, Patroclus, and Achilles met in a clearing in the forest. The trees rustled in the night wind, and the fresh scent of earth and leaves filled the air. Both warriors knew that once they embarked on this adventure, nothing would ever be the same again. Should we go? asked Patroclus, his voice full of uncertainty. Achilles looked up at the sky, where the moon and stars were shining brightly. Glory awaits us, my friend, he replied, but also the possibility of immense sorrow. Yet our duty is to Greece. And so, with the promise of adventure in the air and the weight of destiny on their shoulders, Achilles and Patroclus joined the Greek forces on their journey to Troy. Thus, the plains of Troy resounded with the clash of swords and the cry of war. Amid the battle, Achilles, with his shining armor and supernatural abilities, stood out as a beacon of hope for the Achaeans. Beside him, Patroclus fought bravely, defending his comrades and protecting his homeland. As the war progressed, the Trojans, led by the valiant Hector, proved to be worthy adversaries. The fighting was intense, and heroes fell on both sides, making the outcome of the war uncertain. However, an incident in the Greek camp turned the tide of the conflict. Agamemnon, leader of the Achaeans, took Chryses, the daughter of Apollo's priest, Chryses, captive. Enraged by the offense, the priest begged Apollo to punish the Greeks, and the god responded by sending a plague that decimated the Achaean ranks. In an attempt to placate the god, Agamemnon agreed to return Chryseis to her father, but in return, he took Briseis, a captive who had been given to Achilles as spoils of war. The young warrior saw this not only as a personal affront, but also as an insult to his honor and prestige. Filled with anger and spite, Achilles decided to withdraw from combat, refusing to fight alongside those who had dishonored him. The Trojans, learning of Achilles' absence, were encouraged and began to advance with renewed energy. The plains that had once been dominated by the Greeks now bore witness to Trojan strength and skill. Patroclus, though grieved by his friend's decision, understood his anger. However, he could not help but feel a deep concern for the fate of the Achaeans. The shadow of war loomed over them, and with Achilles out of action, the outcome seemed increasingly uncertain. The air was thick with despair in the Greek camp. With Achilles, their most formidable warrior, refusing to engage in combat, hopes of victory were vanishing like smoke. The tents were filled with wailing and wounded as the Trojans advanced with momentum. Patroclus, who had watched with anguish the decline of his companions, approached Achilles' tent with a bold proposal. The sound of wailing reminded him, with every step, of what was at stake. Allow me to dress in your armor, implored Patroclus. Your mere presence on the battlefield could change the course of this war. If the Trojans believe you have returned, their morale will plummet. Achilles looked at his friend with eyes full of conflict. He could see the sincerity in Patroclus' face, his desire to change the fate of his companions. After a long silence, Achilles nodded, but not without warning. 
Do not pursue the Trojans further than necessary. Do not approach their walls. This is a stratagem, not a mission of conquest. Clad in the iconic armor, Patroclus looked the very image of Achilles. He mounted his chariot, and upon entering battle, the tide immediately turned. The Greeks, encouraged by the presence of Achilles, fought with renewed vigor. The Trojans retreated, fearful of the warrior they believed to be immortal. However, the momentum of combat and the desire to protect his comrades led Patroclus to forget Achilles' warnings. He continued to press on, moving farther and farther away from the Greek camp and closer to the walls of Troy. There, Hector, the brave Trojan prince, was waiting for him. They threw themselves against each other, two titans on the battlefield. But luck did not favor Patroclus that day. Disarmed and knocked from his chariot, he met his end at the hands of Hector, who raised his sword believing he had defeated the invincible Achilles. The battlefield was silent for a moment, a silence that was quickly broken by the wailing of the Greeks as they recognized the body of Patroclus. Although their stratagem had initially succeeded, the price had been too high. Achilles' best friend lay lifeless on the ground. News of Patroclus' death swept through the Greek camp like an icy wind. Achilles, hearing the news, fell to his knees, the pain palpable on his face. Tears flowed freely, and his wail filled the air. The loss of his comrade, his brother-in-arms and closest friend, was a blow from which he would never fully recover. Amid his grief, Achilles felt a burning anger, a fury such as he had never experienced before. He swore vengeance against Hector, the Trojan prince responsible for Patroclus' death. Achilles' mother Thetis, aware of her son's pain, called upon Hephaestus, the blacksmith god, to forge a new suit of armor for Achilles, a suit of armor that would be the envy of the gods. The new armor shone with a golden glow, reflecting Achilles' anger and determination. Clad in his new armor, Achilles returned to the battlefield. His only mission was to find and kill Hector. The Trojans, seeing Achilles back in combat, felt a paralyzing fear. His presence on the battlefield was like a whirlwind of death and destruction. Hector, despite the warnings of his family, decided to confront Achilles. The two warriors met outside the walls of Troy, and their confrontation was epic. The gods watched from Olympus, aware that they were witnessing a decisive moment in human history. After an intense duel, Achilles, driven by his grief and anger, defeats Hector, taking the Trojan prince's life with him. However, instead of feeling satisfied, the emptiness in Achilles' heart grew. Vengeance had not brought Patroclus back to him. Achilles dragged Hector's body around the walls of Troy, an act of contempt that even the gods considered extreme. But eventually, moved by the pleas of King Priam, Hector's father, Achilles allowed the Trojan prince's body to be returned to his family to receive a proper funeral. The war continued, but for Achilles, each day was a shadow of what it had been before Patroclus' death. His end was near, and though he fought bravely, the pain in his heart never disappeared.